Okay. Um, so there's there's a lot of threads I could sort of go down here that play to the AAC nerd side of me, but I'm going to push forward <laughs> a little bit. This is a little more than just me. So, um, you know, when I think about Discover AAC, really what we're doing is we're looking at the, um, you know, the comment you made about how the number one predictors, and really we have evidence that shows that training for the family of support, the circle of support around a child is, is what's going to predict adoption and abandonment. And, um, you know, so with that in mind, you know, and knowing what you know now, if you could go back in time and tell yourself, I guess, a handful of things um, as someone new to AAC, like what do you think are the most important things? Uh, so, as, so as uh, as a parent or somebody who's just barely getting getting involved in AAC, um, as I've talked to people that are in that situation and thought back on my own experience, the biggest, the, the most common word or I guess sentiment that I get is one of loneliness or isolation. You know, they feel like they're thrown into this new world. There's nobody really that they can trust. You know, there's this new speech path. There's this new software or maybe vendor sometimes there's everything is new uh and you don't know the right questions to ask uh and it, it's all just very intimidating and very lonely it's not like you can go down to the street and you know uh get get some uh, meet with some friends and say hey what did you do in this situation right uh, and so um having having opportunities to build up a community i think is really valuable and having resources, I was really excited when I first heard about Discovery AAC because those kind of resources uh, we really need. You know, when 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 I started Cough Drop, the reason I came with the name Cough Drop was because I wanted some I wanted something that people could understand as a way to help get your voice out. You know, when you when you're hoarse, you throw a cough drop in your mouth, uh, and you can talk a little bit better. And nobody looks at you weird, um, and and so that was the goal to so try to help help with that problem in the AAC space. And so part of it is good technology, but also part of it is just outreach, trying to help people see that this isn't weird. You know, when you throw a cough drop in your mouth, nobody looks at you weird and says, what did that guy just do? You know, right. but, but AAC is still something that's not very understood or appreciated. And we need to find ways to have more resources for not just the communicator and not just mom and dad, but the kid in the right. classroom and the neighbor down the street that they can, you know, whatever it is, watch a YouTube video or get some kind of resource so that it's not as intimidating and they know what to do about it. That's great. I mean, I absolutely agree. Um, the importance of this sort of network of support and everything else. I mean, you can get an hour a week with uh, with me as a speech pathologist, but the value of that relative to sort of constant modeling and understanding at home, um, yeah, right. you know, is, is negligible. And that's another thing we know from research, right? You know, multi-mold and multi-environment uh, sort of interactions are going to be much more effective for reinforcing uh, the communication strategies anyway. So if we can find ways to get a whole team, not just, you know, the, this direct team, which is teacher and parent and therapist, but grandma and cousin and the kids at church, you know, those sort of resources can be of great value as well. Right. So have you have that ex experience yourself having that conversation then with family members and how has that gone? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, when, when I talk about modeling, um, I, I there's sort of two, two people that I'm modeling with one, I, you know, I model with my daughter and try to, you know, try to show her, you know, new opportunities for communication and things. But at the same time, I try to model for my parents and my brothers and sisters and whoever else is in the room as well and say, this is how we can interact. This is a way that's not weird. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed to just come over and ask a question because they, a lot of times they really want to, but they just don't know what they're supposed to do. And they don't know how long to wait for a response and things like that. And, you know, sitting, sitting everybody in a classroom and saying, this is how we communicate. And I've never been that sort of uh, person, uh, but having just sort of those, those examples to try to share with people makes a big difference. Right, right. That's great. Well, and it, like you say, the uh, training the peers and everyone else, I mean, a lot, I, I, can, I can sit there and do the modeling, but having an eight-year-old model to an eight-year-old, I think, is going to be a little bit more yeah. motivating to all parties. For sure. Um, 